Every star you see in the sky has a story. It's born, it lives, and eventually it dies. But what happens when a star dies, and why should we care? Stars are not just twinkling lights that adorn our night sky. They play a pivotal role in the cosmic theater. They are the cosmic factories where elements heavier than helium are forged, elements that are the building blocks of planets and life itself. The life cycle of stars is a fascinating saga that unfolds over billions of years, beginning in the dense clouds of dust and gas in stellar nurseries, and culminating in dramatic events that signal their demise. Whether they end their lives with a whimper or a bang, each star leaves behind a rich legacy that shapes the universe around it. Just like us, stars have a life cycle, but unlike us, a star's life can span billions of years. Stars begin their life in cosmic nurseries, vast clouds of gas and dust known as nebulae. These stellar nurseries are scattered throughout the universe, brimming with the raw materials that will form the stars of tomorrow. Gravity, that unseen puppeteer of the cosmos, begins to pull these materials together. As these particles draw closer and closer, they begin to heat up, their energy growing with each passing moment. This is the birth of a star, a process known as gravitational collapse. And like any good birth, it's a dynamic and energetic event. The heart of this growing mass of gas and dust becomes so hot and so dense that something extraordinary happens. Nuclear fusion kicks in. Hydrogen atoms, under immense pressure and temperature, begin to fuse together to form helium. This process releases an incredible amount of energy, causing the star to shine brightly. Now our young star enters the longest and most stable phase of its life, known as the main sequence. For billions of years, the star lives a relatively quiet life, steadily burning its hydrogen fuel and maintaining a delicate balance. The outward pressure from nuclear fusion counteracts the inward pull of gravity, keeping the star stable. Different stars live at different paces, though. Smaller stars, like our Sun, burn their fuel more slowly and can remain in the main sequence for billions of years. Larger stars, on the other hand, live fast and die young. They burn through their hydrogen fuel at a frenzied pace, living only a few million years before they meet their dramatic end. So there you have it, the birth and life of a star, from a humble beginning in a nebula to a shining beacon in the cosmos. A star's life may seem peaceful and unchanging for billions of years, but when the fuel runs out, things get dramatic. What happens when a star exhausts its nuclear fuel? It's not a gentle fade into the night. Indeed, the death of a star is a grand, cataclysmic event that marks the end of an epic journey that spans billions of years. When a star has used up all of its hydrogen fuel, it starts to evolve. The core contracts and heats up, triggering the nuclear fusion of helium into carbon and oxygen. This increased energy pushes the outer layers of the star outward, causing the star to expand into a red giant, or, if the star is particularly massive, a red supergiant. During this phase, our star isn't done with its nuclear fusion just yet. In its outer shell, where there's still hydrogen, fusion continues. This process, known as shell burning, creates a double layer of energy production, causing the star to expand even further. But here's the catch. Shell burning isn't stable. It causes pulsations, making the star swell and shrink. And this instability can eject the outer layers of the star into space. As the star loses these outer layers, what's left behind is a hot, dense core. This core is what we call a white dwarf, if the star was about the size of our sun, or a neutron star if it was larger. But that's not all. If the star was truly massive, this core might undergo a spectacular explosion, a supernova, leaving behind a mysterious and infinitely dense point in space, a black hole. The death of a star is a cosmic spectacle, it's a dramatic transformation from a shining beacon of light and energy to a celestial object of a different kind. But what happens next depends on the star's mass. Whether it becomes a quietly glowing white dwarf, a rapidly spinning neutron star, or a black hole, the end of a star's life marks the beginning of a new, equally fascinating phase in the story of our universe. The death of a star is a cosmic spectacle, but what happens next depends on the star's mass. The death of a massive star is marked by a spectacular explosion called a supernova. This violent event is the star's grand finale, a cosmic fireworks display that briefly outshines an entire galaxy. It's a moment of cataclysmic change where a star's life ends and something new begins. Supernovae occur when a star has exhausted its nuclear fuel. 
The core collapses under its own gravity, triggering an explosion that sends a shockwave ripping through the star's outer layers. This explosion releases an immense amount of energy equivalent to the output of a billion suns, lighting up the cosmos in a brilliant display. In the wake of this cataclysm, what remains of the star's core can form a neutron star. These fascinating objects are the smallest and densest stars known to exist. A teaspoon of neutron star material would weigh about a billion tons on Earth. They are the epitome of the phrase, good things come in small packages. But the story doesn't end there. If the star was particularly massive, its core might collapse even further, forming a black hole. These mysterious entities are regions of space-time where gravity is so strong that nothing, not even light, can escape their grasp. They are invisible to the naked eye, yet their presence can be felt, influencing the space around them. But supernovae do more than just create neutron stars and black holes. They also play a crucial role in the life story of the universe. The explosion disperses heavy elements into space, elements that were formed in the heart of the dying star. Elements like gold, silver and uranium are scattered across the cosmos, eventually finding their way into new stars, planets and even life forms. In a very real sense, we are made of star stuff. So when we gaze at the night sky and witness the death of a star, we're not just seeing an act of destruction, we're witnessing a process of creation, a cosmic cycle of life and death that has been unfolding for billions of years. The death of a star is not the end, it's a beginning of a different kind. The death of a star can seed the cosmos with the building blocks of new stars and planets. In the grand theatre of the universe, the death of a star is not an end, but rather a spectacular beginning. When stars like our Sun reach the end of their life cycle, they create planetary nebulae, an expansive shell of gas and dust. These nebulae, glowing with ethereal beauty, are not just celestial eye candy. They are stellar nurseries, the birthplaces of new stars. As these stars breathe their last, they perform one final selfless act. They scatter their enriched guts across the cosmos. Elements heavier than helium, which were cooked up in the star's nuclear furnace or in the heart of a supernova, are flung far and wide. Carbon, oxygen, nitrogen, silicon, iron, the key ingredients for life as we know it, are all starborn. These elements drift through space until gravity pulls them together to form new stars, planets and perhaps life. But what about the most massive stars, the ones that go out with a bang in a supernova? The cataclysmic death of these giants leaves an indelible mark on the cosmos. The energy from a single supernova can outshine an entire galaxy, and its shockwaves can trigger the birth of new stars. The remnants of these supernovae, neutron stars or black holes, continue to shape the cosmos with their immense gravity. The impact of supernovae on the universe is vast, and not just in a physical sense. The explosion of a nearby star millions of years ago may have triggered a mass extinction on Earth, altering the course of life's evolution. On the other hand, the elements synthesized in these cosmic furnaces are vital for our existence. Quite literally, we owe our lives to these celestial titans. So the next time you gaze up at the night sky, remember this. The death of a star is a cosmic recycling process. It's a reminder that we are all made of star stuff. The life cycle of stars is a journey of cosmic proportions. It's a tale of birth, life, death and rebirth. These celestial titans are born within the nurseries of galaxies, grow into fiery orbs and meet their end in dramatic fashion, shedding their outer layers in a supernova or collapsing into the densest objects in the universe, neutron stars or black holes. In their death, they scatter the elements that make up our world and perhaps countless others across the cosmos. It's a cycle that has been ongoing for billions of years, a testament to the grandeur of the universe. A star's life and death are not just cosmic events. They are the creators and recyclers of the very atoms that constitute our world, our bodies, everything we know and love. If you want to explore more cosmic wonders and unravel the mysteries of the universe, hit that subscribe button for more awe-inspiring and educational content. Remember, the cosmos is within us. We are made of star stuff.